Greetings everyone, Flying Doctor here. Uh, yet another brief tutorial on the flight and navigation display for the H145 aircraft produced by Hyper Performance Group. And uh, you may well be familiar with the term primary flight display, but yes, to see flight and navigation display, there's something a bit more going on here. And yes, uh, we're looking at this uh, central uh, readout here. I happen to have the map on on the left hand side, um, but uh, looking to this central um, display, uh, you can see a top level. Uh, and that really is effectively a primary flight display. And you can see a middle section that's clearly a navigational display and a lower section which is an informational display where alarms come up and the basics of information that is actually connected in terms of uh, navigation. So I thought it might be helpful just to look around some but not all facets of this. I will look at some aspects of the uh, primary flight display and the informational display, how to couple the navigation in a later video. But this is a, just the very basics to give you um, uh, a starter. So we'll start first, and I am working my way through the manual um, with insights gathered from elsewhere. We've simply got the power button here, top left, so you can switch it off, switch it on again very quickly and efficiently. Um, you've got the clock. Now the clock is uh, interesting here. It's not quite finished I don't think but I can click once to get um, a stopwatch and a second time to get the time. Now this time should match um, the time that I'm recording and it's, it's not quite right uh, even with the hours adjustment. Uh, you can make adjustments to the clock using the tablet but things aren't quite right there yet. There is a button here but that's inoperative at the moment. And finally, we get to this strange thing that looks like it's got a fork in the top of it. And uh, this I didn't spot straight away. Well, firstly, you can see that there's two limits here. And really, you want to fly the aircraft with uh, the needle in between the limits, put simply. Uh, this is um, effectively a mark of the rotor speed. And um, But of course, it's powered um, through uh, a jet engine. And the jet engine actually has, the way I understand it, and I might not be right, it has two kind of turbines within the jet engine. Um, the first one, um, it, is, it feeds the basic systems used to run the aircraft, include, for example, um, the oil pump. And uh, when you initially uh, start the helicopter off, you can, you can hear a, whir a whirring as the battery or external power just begins to fire that up, great kind of sound. If you listen very carefully, you can hear some clicks and you can actually hear the fuel ignite. Um, whilst that's happening, I call this sort of the cold end. Um, the, the cold end is receiving enough power to begin to run the uh, hydraulics and to, for example, as a sort of say, you know, to, to deal with the, um, the, the air sorry the the oil pump for example at the top i call that the hot end um, at the top end is um, when you have enough power uh, to, to 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 move and shift um, the rotors um, and uh, and so you get almost like a two speed sort of preparation as you start up the helicopter which i'm not done a video on that but i will do um, later uh, you get a kind of the helicopter being at two sort of slightly different limits um, one to sort of get things fired up to to get the basic systems running and the second one we've actually got enough power uh, to lift off and now the thing that's interesting about this um, is that if you'll notice that it's got um, this is a twin engine aircraft engine one engine two and if you notice it looks actually like a fork well you've actually got one a kind of image of, of it's one shape inside another because if I just come down here for example and switch off the flight button right you'll see something happen straight away and I am in autopilot so it's going to struggle uh, but I'm looking to hold altitude and it is holding altitude at the moment okay so you can see that something rather strange has happened here we've only just got like a, a kind of bucket shape and that's indicating we've got one uh, engine uh, working so you've got the ONE um, uh, notice that's come up in red okay um, one engine uh, is in uh, operation and uh, so it's just in just interesting to know and uh, also you've got some warning a warning that's come up here so it's, it's a good way of demonstrating um, how uh, the information can come up 
on the readout here. If you want to acknowledge a notice, so a notice that you've not acknowledged has a background that is it's solid colour and the, the notices come as red, uh, amber or yellow and green. But if I click acknowledge, uh, you'll see there you are. It's, uh, it's saying engine 2 idle, but I've acknowledged that and it's been it dropped up to the top, if you see what I mean. So yeah, just uh, just quite <laughs> interesting. And uh, so obviously I'm going to do a whole um, a, a whole tutorial on this is the first uh, limit indicator here uh, later on. But uh, suffice to say, just so you know um, what's happening. So we'll switch that engine back on. Uh, as you can see, we we'll just wait a while and just see what we get to there we are things coming back up again rotor rpm is saying that the rpm was dropping down but it's recovered now and you saw that come up in the message there so so there you go interesting um but yes effectively you want to operate the aircraft as best you can uh, in between these limits okay let's um let's have a look at um, five six seven these are effectively uh, notices that are coming through from the autopilot so i can see that i'm in hover mode that's gtc.h and i'm also ho holding the altitude there and as you vary the modes in autopilot you the um the the the, the notification here on the screen uh, changes um in terms of the uh, central display here, uh, you can see um, that you've got a simple uh, uh, kind of vertical speed readout. So this is flight level. Sorry, this 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 marker here is first limit indicator. I'm going to do a separate tutorial on that. And the next one in uh, from uh, the inside is your airspeed indicator. Okay, and your airspeed is where the yellow line is matching on the dash so it's the yellow line you're looking at not the not the line below the yellow um, but this is giving you uh, an indication of of airspeed so when we're, we're doing we're, we're not having got any airspeed at the moment as you can see down and it'll uh, if we were to move forward in our airspeed as i say i'll do a tutorial on it later you'll see all kinds of things happening in this screen okay so this is this is this is demonstrating the angle therefore of the the nose so you can see that the nose is around about four degrees up okay as it's holding the um holding the altitude here okay uh, so yes that that's the central that's what the central one of the things that the central indicator is uh telling you um if i were to say that uh so then we have in this display here uh, this is the altitude and the display to the right is the height uh, above ground. Now, because we happen to be in Wales and we happen to be near uh, an air base that's near the coast, there's not much difference at all uh, between the ground height and the altitude. But this is a very helpful tool to have, the difference between the two, because you could be flying a 1,000 feet, but actually the, the ground at an altitude of 500 feet, ground levels at 500 feet, and of course this display will allow you to discern between the two. Okay, next thing we've got some markers down the side here. We've got decision altitude, decision height, and the barometer. Okay, so uh, if you're planning a flight and you want to mark a decision altitude there, if you click on the right here, move down to the, um, uh, the, the knob that's here. And if I'm using a scroll wheel, and you can see in this readout here, my decision altitude. Um, is increasing there and i could vary that as to the decision altitude that i want to take uh, before for example I make a decision about whether i'm going to land and similarly you can operate uh, decision height in much the same way okay uh, barometer is straightforward it's there um, i find that the barometer is usually set straight away by flight simulator but you can change the units if you go into the tablet um, you're able to change uh, the units and uh, again, if you want to change the um, the reading, uh, then you just scroll right, left, or whatever. Larger ring will do, or you, depending on what you're dealing with, there's no difference there actually. Uh, but usually, the larger ring does larger kind of gradations in changing uh, that measurement. Okay, so yes, so I hope that's um, uh, helpful there. Um, if I were to get a warning about decision altitude or decision height, um, you they would appear here. 
and this gap here um, yellow text with a box next to it so once I've set them uh, for the, the warning there um, radio altitude um, if I'm reading off radio altitude will appear in a black box here uh, usually and that would typically appear if you were in um, uh, CR.HT mode so it's where you're holding altitude according to the radio reference um, that the aircraft is taking as it as it uh, measures uh, how far the the um, uh, land surface is away from away from the aircraft so that's what might appeal there but that's all relatively straightforward as I say velocity here um, uh, you'll notice it's uh, there's we've got a uh, a readout here which is actually the takeoff safety speed VTOS is a takeoff safety speed um, but in all to all intents and purposes don't necessarily need to to worry about that we're going to cover this more in a uh, tutorial later now this 21 is quite an interesting one that's new to me certainly new if you're not used to flying rotary aircraft it's called the um, uh, the mast moment indicator now what's happening is that if you've ever been in a helicopter and uh, I, I have had the pleasure of sitting in a helicopter before it was the weirdest experience ever um, in the helicopter that I was in which was in an old Royal Navy Lynx uh, when you sat in it almost felt you could feel the moment you could feel the vibration and the shudder as the whole um, kind of canopy sort of shook now what happens is when you're in the air uh, those vibrations work through the fuselage and the energy is dissipated but the minute that you land the aircraft obviously the moments the forces that are at work through the airframe begin to increase and particularly if you're landing the aircraft on a slope or if you're carrying uh, and laying down a, um, a load then there are the, the, the moment that is being applied across the fuselage, the forces are greater and it's important to keep track of those. So that's what effectively um, that measure will do. And uh, in terms of uh, just regular flight, it's not something I've had to uh, come to deal with, but it is interesting to see how it will be interesting to see how that's worked out at, um, at a, a later um, date. Right, so I think what else we need to look at. There's an interesting measure here, 22. Um, this is the wind direction, but the thing that's easy to miss on this is that that little tick there is indicating that it's five knots. If I increase the wind speed, I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to go um, into the weather. I'm going to fix a, a weather layer and wind layer. Yeah, we'll have one of those. What are we at? We're at 1,700 feet. Uh, so, yep. Should let me do that, or maybe not. Come on, let me have a. There we are. We'll have a wind layer at 1700 feet, round about where we are. And we're going to give it um, a speed of 20 knots. Watch what's happening to the arrow as I increase the speed of the wind. Can you see? I'll zoom right in, see how close we can get. There we are. That's better, isn't it? So as I'm playing about. Alt, just adjusting the wind speed you can see that there's big big changes here and the changes are thus so a little tick is five knots or up to five knots you can see we're simulating well, three four there and then at five and then as that increase as 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 you go from five to ten you get a larger um, kind of tick on the edge of the arrow then as we go to 15, you can see a second little marker starts beyond that. And as we go to 20, and you can see what's happening there. Now, the triangle is an interesting one, because that triangle that just appeared, where have you gone? Come back. Oh, I saw it a minute ago. Oh, come on. Oh, ah. Oh. It's 50. It's 50. It's 50, 50 knots for a triangle. But but yes, you can see uh, you can see what's um, what's happening there. So um, yeah, just to run through just to run through um, again, uh, a little tick is five knots. A longer line is ten knots, and they kind of add up um, on uh, on the way. Okay. So yes, something that's easy that's easily kind of overlooked that. But we'll 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 take the gusts out of it, shall we? And we'll give it we'll give it five up to five knots. There we are. Okay. 
Obviously, you've got your navigation display here, and when you click here, you can select. I'm still just working out what's going on, and uh, you can click whether you're displaying the ILS course, um, uh, whether you are displaying both that and the FMS course, and direction finder. So there's options there. I've actually I've actually plugged a route in here, and you can see that um, that the route is easterly. Um, and if I click on the nav button here and select FMS, you see it's blue and it's following the same course. Um, it's a roughly easterly, easterly course, and uh, so yeah, so so that that appears therefore on your navigation uh, kind of ring here. Also notice that you've got this little green marker, which is what your heading is set to, um, and then. I uh, mentioned the acknowledge button before. You click on that to acknowledge uh, the message. Uh, what the right hand uh, indicator here says 425 kilos. That's in fact the fuel that we have available. Um, uh, OAT 12 degrees C. Well, this one spent, I spent some time thinking what on earth that is the uh, outside temperature um, at 12 degrees C. And then we have some operation. This is a nice little key um, SVS or FDS. Um, but one will give you the um, the the flight display here with just a black background. The other one will overlay it uh, and give you an understanding, a you know, a digital view of what's happening outside. It's particularly useful if you're coming to um, land into an airport. So don't forget that one. SCT is just a variation, as far as I can see, on how the navigation is uh, displayed and indications this kind of this gives you an indication of how effectively for example we're hovering so you use that in hover mode um this, i would sort of say that's just sort of standard mode now we will i will very quickly talk about the couple button um but we'll do much more about this later so if you have um in order to follow an autopilot track you need to couple two screens together you need to couple the navigation information on this screen with the navigation information here. And we'll just come up and I'll have a look at this. Hang on, right. So let's have a look at um, this NavAid button here. So if I select Nav and keep clicking that, I've got various options. I've got my ILS2 in there, my SMS, my ILS1. And obviously we're not gonna use ILS2 or ILS1. We would use it if we were approaching an airport, but we are using the FMS G GPS plan. Now, um, you can press either button, but in order to tie this to this, um, you and and then enter into autopilot so it will follow a nav source. You link those two together, okay, and then you press couple, and you'll see it go green. And then what you're seeing now is you're seeing the helicopter automatically following uh, nav source. Isn't that cool? There we are. Let's have a look out there. So yes, you can get some kind of uh, idea um, there. So yes, and uh, just just to emphasise that, don't forget your tablet. Your tablet gives you plenty of options for um, uh, for starting up. So your units are here, as well as I mentioned, your barometric unit. You can change it to millimeters of mercury or inches of mercury or uh, that this um, Pascal, uh, the this other measurement that we've got. Temperature units wherever you are, you know, so you can um, sort that for you as well. So yeah, I think that's probably uh, about it. I'm just having a look to see if I have um, missed anything, but enough enough to get you um, definitely enough to get you you started. Um, so yeah, enjoy and um, keep an eye out because what I shall do is I shall give uh, a more detailed tutorial, um, one on coming up on the uh, left hand uh, here. And this hand read out here, and one on the airspeed. It always confuses me what the left hand, what the left hand uh, read it, reading is. What it's called. I'll remember in time for the next one. Anyway, um, just uh, take care, and uh, yeah, just remembered, uh, just remembered what it is. It's, a, it's the <laughs> the first limit indicator, so it shows you limits of power as you are raising the collective, and the collective is attached to the throttle, and that's what gives you increased altitude. All right, take care. Um, 